Chrysler Division presents Diff France Does It for 1958. Today, more than ever before, competition among makers of luxury line motor cars calls for a new concept of selling techniques. Dealer patronage must be built up by an interfusion of factual differences... Hold that... everything, mister. You're talking like a long hair. Who said that? I said it, mister. Well, who are you? I'm Luxury Diff Rance. Been around for centuries. I observe all, catalog all, remember all. You can call me Diff for short. Okay, but... Uh... I was getting a good start on this meeting when you interrupted. Good start? <laughs> you think those fellows out there could sit still for that sort of tripe? Half of them would be asleep in five minutes. Now, wait a minute. I've talked to them like that before. So and... give them something different for a change. Yeah, let's show them some close-ups of some photos I have with me. Two Cadillacs, three years apart. A 1955 and a 1958. Now, how much has the style changed? Hmm, I'd say Cadillac hasn't progressed very far in three years with its styling lines. Right. Now, let's see how far Imperial styling lines have progressed. And there you have it. A 55 and a 58 Imperial. Well, there's no doubt about it. Imperial has made far greater improvement in styling lines to keep up with the modern trend. Right again. Now, let's open the curtains... And yours truly, Luxury Difference, will help you tell these folks just what's what about the 1958 Imperial and Cadillac. Well, here they are, the new Imperial and the new Cadillac, two fine luxury line cars. Sure, sure, but don't hog the show. I want the fellas in the audience to get to know Difference. I go for real high-class styling, as you can see. That's why I want to look both these new cars over carefully. Say, let's show them a close-up of those front ends. Man, that's really impressive, right? Right. Imperial's new grille and bumper assembly for 1958 gives the impression of greater lowness and width. That's just what I meant. Let's see the Cadillac. Cadillac's front end styling hasn't improved much for 1958. Well, that's easy to see. But Imperial's front end styling is all new for 1958. These two emblems are well known in the motor world. To make a choice, a prospect should know just what each represents, just what differences there are in these two luxury cars. Yeah, but a prospect won't know unless he's told. There are a lot of differences that won't be appreciated unless they're pointed out. Both are beautiful cars, but the Imperial is actually longer, lower, and wider. That thin roof line on the Imperial gives it a modern look. How about the rear styling on the Imperial? Don't you think it gives the impression of lowness? Mister, this is a difference feature. This sloping deck lid with this spare tire embossment is really something. And like you say, the whole effect is one of lowness and real class. And as you see, there's no difference in the Cadillac's rear end. Still has that high, humped-up look of former years, if you know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean, all right. The difference is all with the Imperial. And look here. The front corner post on the Imperial slants forward from the roof line, in keeping with the Imperial's sleek styling. Right o And the rear corner post slants backward to give flowing lines and more visibility. In contrast, the front corner post of the Cadillac slants backward from the roof line, forming a point that interferes with getting in or out of the front seat. The forward slant of the rear corner post and that small side vent window breaks the visibility for rear seat passengers. The difference in slant of the front and rear corner posts gives the impression that the Imperial in the top frame offers more side visibility and more open side space for summer driving. That's a smart observation, very smart. Well, let's get on with it. That handles another difference feature. Talk it up, mister. Oh, yes, the, the Imperial's safety recessed exterior door handle. It opens with the touch of the fingers and adds to the sleek line styling. Now, there's the handle on the Cadillac. Right. The Cadillac still uses the regular protruding type exterior door handle. But tell you what, Diff, let's show the luggage compartments of these two luxury cars. Here's the new Imperial's roomy carpeted luggage compartment with the spare tire positioned to give more space. Say, I feel lost in here. Sure will carry a whale of a lot of luggage. What do you think of the luggage compartment here in this Cadillac? Well, of course, it's also roomy and 
It's also carpeted, but that spare tire takes up a lot of space here. You can say De France favors the Imperial for having the edge in luggage compartment roominess. You know, we have to admit the interiors of both the Imperial and Cadillac are right in there with luxury, comfort, and conveniences. But I like the instrument panel of the Imperial better. It's really designed for looks and handiness. Well, let's look at the Cadillac and see the difference. There it is. Look it over. I think Imperial's panel is easier to see and reach, though. I agree. And there's one other Diff France feature. There's what I mean. Absolutely unique with Imperial. Those push-button controls for the automatic transmission. Really great. I go along with that. The fact is, the Cadillac uses the selector lever other cars use. It's not near so handy or safe. That's a difference, all right. A real difference. We'd better bring up Imperial's full-time power steering. For 1958, all the steering gear mechanism is located below the floorboard. Gives a lot more room down here. That's a good point. A good difference feature. You can see there's less room here for the feet with Cadillac's power steering. Yes, and Cadillac's power steering works only part-time. Remember that. That's something worth bringing to a prospect's attention any time. But for my money, this roof treatment is a touch of inspiration. Here's a difference styling that no other luxury car can match for classy looks. That Landau top on the Imperial also adds to the strength of the roof, as well as to its styling diff. Compared to the Cadillac roof styling, the Landau-styled Imperial roof really is a standout. As I see it, Imperial has the Cadillac outclassed in styling from the roof to the ground. Yep, put them side by side, and you can see the difference that gives Imperial the edge in fine styling. Absolutely. And Imperial sleek styling has already been accepted by the public as the finest among fine cars. Look, we know styling is a big selling feature and ought to be talked up plenty. But how about giving the lowdown on other features, like ride, handling, and performance? Those are features a prospect has to be told about too, you know. Well, let's find out by actual road tests how the Imperial and Cadillac for 1958 compare in those important features. Good idea. The road test crew won't see me, but you can bet Diff Rants will be right there. Good. And as you know, they use stock cars right off the line for the tests. Well, I'm off to see the tests. Have to change to a suitable outfit, but I'll be right there for every test. Okay, Diff. We'll be looking for you. Well, I see you're right on the job. What's the first test going to be? An acceleration test, passing on a 7% grade. Keep your eyes open so you can tell the folks what's happening. All right, let's go. Here, the Imperial on the left side of the road and a new Cadillac on the right side get the flag to accelerate from a running speed of 25 miles per hour. Both drivers step on the accelerators. Imperial begins to gain as they near the 100-foot marker. Near the 200-foot marker, the Imperial is moving ahead fast. At the 300-foot marker, the Imperial is about two car lengths ahead of the Cadillac and still increasing its lead until... At the 500-foot marker, the Imperial is about 75 feet ahead of the Cadillac. Here's engine transmission performance that gives the Imperial a really big margin of safety in passing on a highway. Think I was out of the picture? Ha-ha, <laughs> not difference. I was riding right along with Imperial in this test, so tell that to a prospect. Diff is right. Here's a difference a new car buyer should be told about. Now, on to the next test. Hold everything. We'll have the next test in just a minute. Fact, there are a lot of really good ones coming up as soon as the record is turned. Now, here we go with the next test. The Imperial and Cadillac going up a 32% grade from a stop position. Tell them about it. Well, here's a test for real pulling power on a mighty steep hill. The Imperial on the right side of the road and the Cadillac on the left get the start signal. Now they're starting up. Hey, the Imperial's pulling ahead, seems like. Look at that! Just look at that! The Imperial's moving ahead fast, and they're only part way up the hill. Look at that Imperial go! Halfway up, and it's way ahead of the Cadillac. Hee! What a test! A little more than halfway to the top of the hill, and the Cadillac's really out of the picture. There's power for you. You're right, Diff. There's sheer brute pulling power. A big difference in engine transmission performance in favor of the Imperial. Well, there it goes over the top as easy as you please. The new Imperial. And believe you me, little old Diff Rance is sticking with that Imperial. Yes, there's a difference in pulling power that's well worth telling any prospect. 
And by the way, give him the lowdown on the brakes of the Imperial and Cadillac, will you? Then we'll have another test. That's a good idea. Brakes are mighty important for safety and peace of mind. First of all, Imperial has a total brake lining area of 251 square inches, while Cadillac's is only 210.32. Quite a difference. What's more, Imperial's brake lining is bonded to the brake shoe, but Cadillac's is riveted, which means Imperial's brake lining will last much longer. So far, so good. Now let's see how they compare in a brake fade test. Here's the brake fade test. Each car has already had several consecutive quick stops from 60 miles per hour. Now they approach the flagman again, and as he gives the signal at the zero marker, both drivers apply the brakes. The flag comes down, and they step hard on the brakes. And here's the result. The Imperial on the right side of the road came to a stop from 60 miles an hour at the 100-foot marker. The Cadillac moved about 75 feet farther before coming to a stop. What a difference. Guess you wondered where I was, huh? Well, your pal Diff Rance was right here all the time riding with the Imperial. After all, it means a lot more safety to have that braking margin of 75 feet, right? Right again. You know, I think our friend Diff Rance will stick with Imperial all the way when it comes to a torsion air ride. This is a different type of suspension that has already proved to be a... Hey, Diff, where are you? I'm here inside, looking at that Diff Rance feature, the torsion spring. Sure want to see how this works in some road tests. Well, hurry up with your inspection. We have to get on with the tests. Here I am. Say, those horizontally mounted torsion springs are different. Sure are. They allow the whole car to be lowered to provide additional ride and steering benefits without sacrificing interior space. Well, difference has to be shown. So I'm getting back to those road tests right away. <laughs> I'm right with you. We sure hope you stick with us. Here we go again, folks. The boys tell me this is to be a rear-end squat test on a fast takeoff. That's right, Diff. The Imperial and Cadillac will make a fast start from a standing position. The Imperial on the right and the Cadillac get the signal to start. Notice the height of the striped rods from the ground. Right now, they're exactly in line. And away they go as the drivers step down on the accelerators. Now look at the difference in height from the ground of those striped rods. The one attached to the Cadillac is much lower than the one on the Imperial showing a decidedly big degree of squat. Hmm, I wonder where Diff is. I'm right here with Imperial. Where'd you think I was? Nice level takeoff, no? <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. A really level takeoff without rear end squat, a result of Imperial's torsion air suspension. Now, what's next? Well, the test crew is running the Imperial and the Cadillac at 45 miles per hour over that road you see there. And believe me, that road is as rough as any you'd ever come across. That's sure a great test for rideability. The Imperial, in the top picture, comes over a big hump fairly level and with a good grip on the road. Say, look at that Cadillac, though. Looks like it's trying to be another Sputnik. Got its wheels in the air. The Imperial is still level, but now look at that Cadillac. Back end is up and it's nosing down in front. Keep your chin up, Caddy. Another bump and the Imperial keeps a level head. Yeah, but the Cadillac is sticking its nose in the air now and dipping its rear end. Once again, a bump, and again there's little reaction from the torsionary-equipped Imperial. Yeah, but the Cadillac looks like it's tired and wants to sit down. Well, there they go. The Imperial riding steady and level with torsion air suspension. The Cadillac still bouncing and bouncing over the rough road. The Cadillac was equipped with standard coil spring suspension. I bet the Cadillac driver is uncomfortable. Driver comfort is a big benefit of torsion air ride. The driver of the Imperial in the top picture is much more comfortable and relaxed than the Cadillac's driver. You can be sure of that. Maybe if the Cadillac had air springs, the results would have been better and the driver more comfortable. Actually, the results with air springs would be about the same. In fact, the same tests were made with other GM cars equipped with air springs and torsion air rides still proved to be far superior. Frankly, a Cadillac with air springs was not available at the time of these tests. Okay, I'm convinced. Diff France is staying with Imperial's Torsion Air for 1958. One thing more. Torsion Air gives better handling and maneuverability, too. Now, let's run a pylon test between the Imperial and Cadillac, and you'll see what I mean. All right, pylon test coming up. Let's go. Now, this is it. A run by the Imperial and the Cadillac at 35 miles per hour as they weave through pylons on the road. You take over now. I have something I want to try. Now go to it. Give it that old master's pitch. 
Here they come at 35 miles an hour. The Imperial in the top picture. Both cars made it between the first two pylons and are now weaving between the next two nearer the camera. Swinging back now behind the third pylon from the camera and that Cadillac is really swinging. They're making it between the second and third pylon. Flash, the Cadillac slipping. That Cadillac's heading for trouble. The Cadillac's balking. It's fighting its driver all the way, while the driver of the Imperial is in complete control all the way. But wait. Cadillac's getting temperamental. It's now broadside to the track. But there's no stopping Imperial, ladies and gentlemen, not on your life. And as Imperial smoothly finishes the run, Cadillac gives up and heads for home by the nearest route. Thank you and good riding. Whew, that was some test. And is the combination of full-time power steering and torsion air suspension good? They're terrific, and you can tell that to your prospect with confidence. Say, I wonder what became a little diff. Here I am. <laughs> what happened to you? Well, I thought I'd go along with Cadillac that time. But I got roughed up and fell off the deck lid when it started chasing rabbits across that field. Anyway, I'm back with Imperial where I belong. You sure belong to Imperial, dear France, in a big way. But that first name of yours, Luxury, is out of order the way you look right now. Ho-ho! I'm a fast worker. I'm with Imperial in style, ride, handling, and performance right down the line. Good. And I wish all prospects could be told your story, Mr. Luxury de France, the story of all the differences that make the Imperial outstanding among the luxury line of cars. Yes, here's the car that Tom McCahill, one of the country's foremost test drivers, called, quote, the greatest car built in America, unquote. Tell that to your customers. Who could ask for more? <laughs>